So, Herbie. Yes. I will let you intro this Herbie. whole thing because. <laughs> um. So the 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 first topic today is about black fishing. And for friends in chat who are maybe unfamiliar with the phenomenon, uh, black fishing is sort of the, the, this this term emerging particularly out of like social media and like the influencer space that speaks to almost exclusively women, white women, who have modified their bodies to make themselves look, if not straight up black, at least racially ambiguous, unequivocally non-white. And right, like, whoa, Vicky, and, and I found out, by the way, this blew my mind mm -hmm. in prep for this. Apparently, it's pronounced bad baby. Yeah. I've been, which, I, anyway, we'll, we'll, I will leave it like that. The I, hate I is, is silent. So fucking stupid. Because, um, I mean, so we'll get Danielle, to, we'll get to that, that whole issue as well, because that has a lot to do with the problem. D Danielle Bergoli are, are two of like the, the maybe heavy hitters here. Now, so this, the, I, I offer this up to Mothman as like a topic for today because Danielle Bregoli, bad baby, baby, um, issued some kind of like social media apology for a prior video she had made where she was accused of being a blackfish. And her comment was like, who wants to be black? Who wants to be black? Um, and folks' response, my sense was, was well, one, you do clearly. And two, like, what kind of racist shit is that? Who wants to be black? Um, and so she issued a half-assed, like, this is what I actually meant apology that didn't in any way, shape, or form touch on, on like, the, the questions at hand. So th th that's what inspires this. So he here's, here's what I'm seeing, Herbie. Um, Black fishing, I think, is, is an incredible phenomenon because it, it's it's a function of social media, mm -hmm. right? Like, like you would have to go through like Rachel Dolezal levels of depth to achieve this IRL, right? Like in your meat space life, right? Yeah. Like Rachel Dolezal distanced herself from her parents, got a PhD, right? Like it would layers. Here, like, you just need to find the right foundation. I mean, I'm being reductivist, right? But so what we're seeing is these, the, these young women are engaging in, like, a technological manipulation of the body, right? And I mean that both literally in that, like, there is camera magic afoot. And I also mean that in terms of, like, thinking of cosmetics as forms of technology. This whole phenomenon, to me, like, invites us to think about how race really does function as an assemblage, right? That race isn't merely about phenotype because unless these folks are exposed, so many of them pass for black, unquestionably, right? Or racially ambiguous POC, right? So it, it brings to, it, it raises for me all kinds of questions about like the, the, the essentialism that's always at the heart of a particular kind of argumentation around cultural appropriation. This is ours. To be black is this, or to be brown is this, et cetera. And you are barred from it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you've got these, you know, folks like uh, Danielle Bergoli and, 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 and Wo Vicky, who in their presence come off as light-skinned black girls and there's like an artificial darkening of skin. And when they do their makeup tutorials, right? Like the shades that they're applying are like, galaxies darker than what their like natural skin tones are um there are all kinds of technologies around changing their hair um their aesthetics and, it, and and then it gets into like the composition of the body right like nameplate necklaces hoop earrings the way they line their lips um the way they work out right like these like thick 
thick girl like workout routines that are about like hips and butt and thighs, right? And 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 developing a particular shape and, and insisting on a particular aesthetic. And in some cases, you've got folks who are getting like progressively darker as they become more meaningful and influential. Um, and then you have, of course, like the the then emerging like counter cottage industry of folks who spend their time exposing them. So uh, the first question I want to pose, Herbie, is why the fuck does this piss us off so much? What buttons does this phenomenon press that it's coming like, like that that that, we're, that it brings it to us here? Mm -hmm. I think I think the first part you alluded to is there is a level of possessiveness that that we feel, and I, I think that has to do with with um with the definition of blackness that I, I stumbled across in my reading um actually just earlier today um from the 1990s that I think is really uh, it's it's. I don't want to butcher this, but I think it's uh, Mohan Ram, 1999. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and the definition is as follows. Blackness is a discursive practice exercised by the confluence of history, economics, geography, and language. Which is, I think, a really astute assessment of how that works. Because it's not just about looking the part or acting the part. There is there is a historic component to it that's really important. There is a lived history as in addition to the actual sort of historical foundation of blackness and what it has been, what it has had to endure. Um, that is a level of racial consciousness that I don't think anyone who is dressing the part can ever actually really manage, right? Like you could, you could talk the talk and fail the, like the linguistic profiling check, right? Like somebody would be like, Oh, you sound black. So I guess, right. Like I, I'm thinking specifically of, of, uh, and, and Aman will appreciate this, but when Testify was like G checking JP and I via Xbox, he was like, "Y'all black?" He was like, "Y'all black?" He was like, "Y'all black?" Um, and, and we're like, <laughs> I, "I mean, yeah." And and so like the the best part, right, is like he give, give me a serial number. I gotta call the consulate. I, and and Make so dollar. like the best part is like he's like running through our our like black credentials. Having black never seat. having never seen us or met us or knowing anything about us other than like mm -hmm. being mentioned by Amon in in, in conversation, you know, mm -hmm. probably here and there. And he's like, All right, this Mothman guy, I buy it. But this JP Black Ranger dude, that's that whole gamer tag is too sus. And I'm like, I mean, <laughs> objectively speaking, if you were one of the idiots that like patrols the the grounds of society, black when, if you saw JP and I in person, you'd be like, he's black. He might be mixed. Um, and that would be that, right? But like the 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 ability to not just speak the language, but like know the credentials to mm -hmm. to have that identity are super important, right? So the history is, is super important. You 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 grow up around certain cultural artifacts, you grow up around certain understandings of what your your life has been like, experiences that you've had to sort of mediate. And you and I know this as as you know, prep school kids, um that there's a lot of stuff that you have to deal with in terms of exposing other people to your racial consciousness. You're like, by the way, I'm not a white person. So the way that you're thinking about all this stuff that we're doing in high school doesn't make sense to me mm -hmm. because my brain works differently. Um, just cause the, you know, that's just what I've experienced. The econ the economics of it, right? Like that's just a, a given there, there is an entire experience predicated on a history of inequity and the destruction of wealth that we well, understand. No. You people to mind just wrote. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like racial Oh, wait, sidebar, quick plug. Um I would really enjoy if we could play a game of Among Us on Friday for my birthday. Um I'm, you I know I I'm would love Lois like we haven't played yet and I'm like I would love nothing more than to waiting. get drunk and play Among Us with my friends. Um can, can we just make that a point like chat now you know? I yeah, like I I'd, I'd really like to to do that. I think it'd be super fun. Um can, can can we advertise this on yeah. on our page? Why not? That might be the wave. Yeah, I'm with it. Um, it, it's it's kind of true, right? And and so like the the linguistic profiling thing is super important, I think. And and like Whoa, Vicky, try and so does you know Bad Baby. She they both do the same thing. They try really hard to embody the voice of like a like a southern like really commodified ghetto, like the way that you would see it in like GTA and nowhere else. No, seriously, I, it, it, 
correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I mean, you grew up in Harlem. I grew up in the Bronx, right? I, I only know a handful of people who speak the way that they do. And these are like bonafide. Like, Vicky? Like, like, yeah, like, bro, like, I don't know. I know anybody. like one or two. I know them. They're the two. Not with not with the Southern drawl, but I know like one or two folks from the hood who who have that like deep, deep seated ebonic vernacular. Like Bronx ass. Yeah, accent. like they, yeah. Just, there's sure. no getting around it, right? Mm-hmm. It is just the way that they that they speak. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, right? Like you you work in a little bit of ebonics here and there, and and that's just how it goes. And it also changes by by group and. And by a whole bunch of other different metrics. What borough you're in, what other folks yeah. you're in, what flavor of black you're in, right? Like Correct. The, the New York slang you defer to when you're a mixed non-Spanish speaking company is different than the sp- slang you defer to when everybody there is of the Hispanophone Caribbean persuasion. The other thing that's interesting about that too, right, is that when it's done by, by people who's, who are not posing as the identity... Most of the time, it's done as like a a community like a community building thing. It's like we need to speak in code, especially how it was oh, histo- yeah. how it was historically used, and it's still used that way. There's there has never been an opportunity that that I think we have missed historically to talk over people in a room and be like, uh, you're not gonna have any idea what the hell is being said, and that's perfectly intentional. And they might know that we're saying some shit that they don't understand. Yeah. But that, like, right? But, um, it, but it's not for, like, a, a performative purpose, right? Like, we understand that there is a level of work that has to be done to embody these identities, right? It, it's why someone like myself got, you know, G-checked by my own family when I came home from high school. And they were like, yo, why you sound so white? And I was like, I, I speak proper English? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. And so, like, the embodiment work is really important. And if anything, social media has made that aspect of it the the floor and the ceiling if you can pull that off you don't actually have to do any of the heavy lifting outside of that the the perception of black embodiment is more than enough to sell it so Mm -hmm. if if you post the right thirst traps if you dress the right way if you gel down your baby hairs right then you can you can embody something that you have no access to with a very explicit purpose i believe and the thing that pisses us off is that like this may just go back to like even our conversation about get out is that like we don't ever have the choice to not embody it like yeah. it, feel, it feels very like saeed baba like you are always other there's never a moment when you're not even when you, you could try your damnedest mm-hmm. to to fit in with the white status quo and you will be othered at the drop of a dime any one thing is out of place if you are inherently other and that shit's gonna come to the fore right whereas if you aren't you get to play dress up. And I think that that's infuriating to a lot of people. Okay, so I, I buy it, Herbie. I buy it, right? Like there there are pieces about this, right? That people like, and I was, you know, in Peace and Justice, we talk about this, right? Like I asked them like, why am I not a woman, right? And they're like, well, what do you, like, what do you mean, right? I'm a woman, I'm, I, I'm a woman. That is not my, right? And they're like, well, but no. Right. And what I want them, but they, they're not even at the gender unit yet. Right. But what I want them to see is that identities, right? Like you don't just get to claim them. They need to be verified. Mm-hmm. Right. There are communities that like will press you, right. Yep. To, to say like, this is a legitimate claim. Um, and, and I think that like, it's, it's an easier trick to pull on social media where we're only talking about like technologies of the body. Mm-hmm. Right. Where, where we really do show that ra- race is an assemblage, right? Like, fucking Puar was right. <laughs> um, race is not merely about the body as body, but it is a conglomeration of, of, of pieces, right? And sticky associations, if we want to bring up Sarah Ahmed. I want to sidebar. We have, we have cited Edward Said, Omi Baba, Jasmine Puar, and Sarah Ahmed, in one episode. Crushing it. High bar. <laughs> High bar. Um, so it's it's an easier trick to pull on social media. But then you get folks like Jessica Krug, 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 Krug right? That professor at, what was it, GW? Yeah. Right? University of Washington? First of all, look, I'm, I'm not even going to front. Folks can pull my card for this. Dolezal, 
had us convinced. You, let uh, me Amon you said the same. Amon said that, Listen, that she counts for 60%. Bro, those braids, she, a black woman did those braids. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. She, the, the, the finesse was, the, right? And, and again, she did this over years. This was not, I got dark foundation and made an Instagram account. Mm-hmm. She was committed like you read about, right? Jessica Krug is telling people, oh, my last name is Krug because it was mistranslated at Ellis. I some craziness like that. It's actually Cruz. It's pronounced Cruz. Now with her, in terms of like the body, I was just like, what fool took this shit at face value? She was claiming she was Puerto Rican from the Bronx. Bro, what projects did you grow up in? Like, mm-hmm. I, we need to run that. Right. Right? Like, and so, so, but in the case, right? And, and what's interesting about Krug and Dolezal is that they were both scholars. So they mm-hmm. were both well studied. Yep. Right? So like the, 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 it wasn't just foundation, right? Like they were in it. And I think that that's why they could, they could pull this off for as long as, I mean, they both, they built careers, mm-hmm. right? Scholarly careers off of this. Right. Uh, Jessica Krug was 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 I mean, she's published at Duke University Press on 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 monies devoted to authors of color. Yep. Right. Like they really they went in on this. Mm-hmm. So. I, I want to hear you speak to like the, the, the finesse level there, but I guess the precursor to that question is what's the desire? So th- this is the thing that drives me nuts. I've been wondering the same thing. What, like, what is the what what's the the pull what's the allure um because and and i get it at some levels i think i think some of it really does have to do with an acknowledgement that there are aspects of black identity or black bodies that that whiteness has always wanted to possess and have access to and at one point did in a very literal sense right where the transactions were very clear because they were state sanctioned Right. You could literally transact blackness however you deemed fit. You could abuse and use it to your right. heart's t- content, right? You wanted to have some mixed babies because it was it was your inclination that morning. Go ahead. Right? That was that was the reality people lived in. So there's always been a desire. Jefferson, we're looking at you, boy. <laughs> there's always been a desire, right, to possess of of black bodies. And it's right. very much that like the in, in the Dolezal and, and crude case they committed to sort of like the lived history of blackness. They wanted to go through the world as a black person, which I think is a very different experience that I have a hard time qualifying. I just, I can't make sense of it. Well, and, and let, let, let me, let me, let me throw some out there, Herbie. And, and I can't speak a whole lot to this, but the, the, at least the Dolezal case, which is older significantly, mm-hmm. the Dolezal case catalyzed a whole small but n- like noticeable body of literature on transraciality, like m- making the case that like why is it if, if we're saying that race is a social contract, why is this not a thing, mm-hmm. right? If if we can have transgender, then why can't we have trans race? And and you you know you read the argument, and, and these are pop- like this isn't fucking bullshit on Tumblr mm-hmm. circa twenty fourteen. Like these are scholarly journals, right? Like these are pieces that passed peer review making this claim. And you sit there and you read these pieces and you're kind of like, hmm. It, it's, it's an interesting question, right? But, but the thing for me is that I can't understand... I can't fully understand why you would want to do it the way they did it versus I can kind of make sense for why Bad Baby and, and Woe Vicky want to do it. Because there is a social, cultural allure to blackness, specifically black women, and the things that make them attractive to people in society, right? And and this is a point I think I made in a whole other conversation that we were having, you know, off off stream, right? Like, there is a desire... Or maybe I was talking to my spouse about this. There's a desire to profit off of all things black without acknowledging that they're black. Like you, you want to take all the bits and pieces of it that are good, but you never want to actually say, "Oh, it's yeah. good because it's black," right? Like 
going back to the example of GTA, the, I think the reason the game is so popular and has been popular for so long is you get to do a lot of the stuff and pre- play pretend as... I want to do hood rat shit with my You want to do hood rat shit with your friends, but you never want to have to suffer the consequences or be labeled yeah. legitimately. You want to be able to put the controller down and be like, it was just a thing. Right? Like, we don't yeah, know if, like, if any time that they're... And 30s. We don't know that if any time that they're not on camera, they're just being their normal selves, right? Like if they take breaks when they're at home and they're just like, "I'm gonna be the little white girl that I actually am," because um, it's not profitable when no one can see me. Yeah, um, and yeah, it speaks to well, like the development of 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 you know this whole aesthetic of like Instagram face and and the the what has been accepted as like standard beauty right now. I think the reason that their version of this makes so much sense is because we've gone to a point where like the standard of beauty is undeniably ethnic with heavy tinges of black and Latina, um, you know, characteristics, but nobody is ever going to credit them with that information. No one. And it's not just them. It's, it's yeah. Nikita Dragon. It's Brett Man Rock. It's James Charles. It's a whole bunch of people who, even if they are ethnic are still pushing the limits of blackness as much as they can, but they're never going to admit that that is a desirable trait. Yeah. Yeah. The, the part, the part though, that I still can't. So I get like the, you know, there are these like IG influencer kind of model types who don the physique, right? Like, I mean, right down to like gelling down their baby hairs the nameplate necklace, the hoops, the right, the 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 curvy figure, mm-hmm. right? Features that are ratchet and ghetto on like bona fide um black and Latino women, but become sexy and trendy on this like in in this influencer space on this like more ambiguous body, right? Like black and brown enough to be like exotic and desirable, uh, but light enough racially ambiguous enough for that desirability to not then be also be illicit right Mm -hmm. so you don't have to be ashamed of like the follow right or like the thirst traps or you know like sending a post to to the group chat but in the case of and in some ways these are like polar extremes right like you know Amon's being said like Rachel Dolezal went all the way in Mm -hmm. And and interestingly enough, you know what Rachel Dolezal does now that her life is imploded? She's a hairdresser, isn't she? She braids hair now. Yeah. There are levels to that that I have not yet processed. <laughs> and I heard this shit like four months ago. Mm-hmm. So there, there's a piece there, right, that I'm just like, huh. Okay. The, 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 I think there's something there that, that I have not yet analyzed, processed, digested, what have you. Whoa, Vicky, though. Whoa, Vicky, I think, is the least black fishy of the black fishes. Because if you just, it's not until she opens her mouth that you get any sense of this performance, mm-hmm. right? When she has TikToks that are just her counting to the number 11, where she says, Alem, Alem, what are you, are you eating ice cream? <laughs> Alem. That's how she says it, right? And it feels it's put on as a fucking dashiki at kwanzaa and there's always the white guy who does who does it right like but in, in any case you've 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 got you've got krug and dolezal going down this like scholarly route where there's like a whole lot of personal investment um a whole lot of like assumed risk Right. And I say assumed risk because like the exposure literally their careers. Yep. Right. Whereas like there's some of these like Instagram like models who are just like because they're not putting on the airs of like ghettoness and ratchetness, mm-hmm. right? To be very crass and direct, that Brigoli and folks like Will Vicky totally insist upon. Um, and so that's the part. That, that, that I think I think we need more theoretical tools to make sense of because I get the aesthetic piece right because that that not that it boils down because desire is simple but I can get the piece there that's about desire and desirability and shifting and ebbing aesthetics right mm-hmm. and, and 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 changes precipitated in some ways by social media by these tools 
what I don't get is the desire for this like ghetto ratchetness when like it only takes a brief like internet search to know that that too is is put on right performative like beyond just the way race is always already performative mm -hmm. so that's the piece that, that i'm I, I still struggle to wrap my mind around and then you brought up this question of like possession and access right um that that there is perhaps something something libidinal about whiteness's relationship to blackness right the the, the whiteness perhaps as a category of of power is so devoid of meaning outside of supremacy that it pursues it endlessly even as that supremacy atrophies right maybe there's a piece there about like a subconscious desire for possession and access that's like in there but i wonder too about like the banalities of whiteness mm -hmm. Right, like it, that perhaps for these kids, like whiteness feels so devoid of inherent value, of inherent meaning, that it's so normal, so mundane, so status quo, that they feel impelled to pursue this ghettoized eroticized conception of blackness and brownness that's a right erotic and exotic by their own making right by the by the functions of whiteness itself mm -hmm. um, that, that, that that's how they like that's the solve that they have to apply over what is perhaps for them a whiteness that's largely empty i think that you're probably right i i would argue that it it speaks to this this sort of societal push towards a really sort of uh, what what uh you know the new yorker article that i linked to you calls a generic sameness mm -hmm. right that you really could if you if you were looking at the way the algorithm was sorting like instagram models or influencers or whatever right like without the names you'd assume it's all the same person's feed when you look at certain images and there are whole pages dedicated to to showing similar posts from like hundreds of people who pose in the same place with the same face who look very the similar in Nashville? Jesus right and, and like right. you know it it makes it makes some sense to suggest that people would be interested in not just meeting the the aesthetic criteria but then going the step further to talk to talk to walk the walk you know to to do hip-hop to make you know like as close to thotty tiktoks as humanly possible right like to do these sure. things that help hammer home the legitimacy of this performance that it's not just an aesthetic that's being put on that it is their actual identity the difference however that i'm i'm finding and maybe this is me reading way too deep into into the difference between you know mm -hmm. these these young girls and those all in krug is that like perhaps at some weird ivory tower level there was a perception that to to be a legitimate scholar in these fields, you cannot be the run of the mill white or the run of the mill white woman. That like that would not give you in, in in ways that like there's a lot of critiques that happen when you have you know like a a cisgender man studying anything that has to do with feminism. They're like, what do, what is this to you? Why are you interested in this? Right. Um, a critique that that you know like people like michael kimmel you know who's an asshole um have have had to have had to deal with right and I, and i think of certain people i'm sure you know who i'm thinking of um who have done similar things oh you went there okay if mm -hmm. if reese is here he knows that certain individuals oh. may or may not have worn do-rags to things that they had no business wearing do-rags to don't say don't tell me that I, d on really? god reese i need bro Hold up. Um, so is, he, is Reese? Are you in here, though? I don't know if he's still in here. Um, but it's it. So it's wait. It, hold on, wait a minute. Wait. I'm not being funny. <laughs> I need to process. I, give no, me. I'll be right back. 
I'll be right back. I need a, I need a bev. Give me give me a second. Go ahead. Chad, I'll be, I'll not. Take uh, take a take a quick bev break. What? Mm-mm. That's what happens when you break Reese. He needs to restock. Yeah. Um. You're gonna have to contextualize that for him in as unidentifiable terms as possible. Because I, I think it speaks to exactly this problem of trying to... I see. Now you're good. Um, hopefully you're winning. Um, I think it speaks to the problem of, of like trying to be taken seriously. And there's something wrong with academia that like we, we expect you to be a certain type of person if you're going to study certain types of shit. Reese is here. He's he's just playing ranked, um, so he's distracted. Oh my fault. Do you, bro? Um, um but I, so what, tell me. Hold up. Tell me somebody said something to him though. I, I tell me know, somebody. I don't know if they did. I don't know I, if they did. I, I want to make a comment. But I'm gonna hold my tongue because if I say it, then I'm gonna expose who it is. Right. Wow. But so, but this is what I'm saying, right? Like there, there's like a putting on airs that happens in academia that you can't study certain things if. if you don't meet the criteria, right? Like, and and I'm not trying to knock people's like chosen areas of expertise or interest, right? Yeah. That that's unfair. Yeah. Um, but there's something to be said about the the directions that people go in that are very much like rooted in who they are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't fit the mold of the thing that you're studying, by golly, it seems like most people are gonna do whatever they gotta do to adjust. So I, I'm going to say something that maybe is going to be a monkey wrench in this conversation. But we did that. We did that. Yeah. And, and what I mean by we is I mean that there is a particular branch of identity politics that insists on brandishing all of the trendy fucking social justice terms. And yet is devoid of robust critique, right? The same folks who who insist upon an essentialist grounding to critiques of cultural, this thing we call cultural appropriation. So invariably, when we follow that line of thinking to its umpteenth degree, we land in a place where we say, non-Black people can't teach Black studies. Mm -hmm. And it's dangerous for, to start. For, to start there, there are just not a lot of us in the academy anyway, right? Um, so that be, that becomes right, like it, it gets tricky in there to begin with. But some of my greatest mentors in the academy were white folks with receipts. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about oh, this is like generic Bobby ass type of who you know is taking up a spot that should have otherwise gone to a, a scholar of color, right? Like I've been on hiring committees. I know how that goes, right? I've, I've, I've walked away from, from some choices feeling that, right? Like, and, and I'm not, to be clear, I'm not implicating my current employer <laughs> at all. Um, no, never that. Fact, the hiring committees that I've been on have actually been rad. And maybe we do an episode on hiring um, because of how we do it here. I've always felt really awesome about the hiring committees that I've set on here. But I've been on other ones where I'm just like, oh, so the dean of that is doing, okay, heard you, got it. So we're just here to, mm hmm understood. But so what happens is that's on us. May, so may, maybe there is a piece about the banalities of whiteness. <laughs> ben, pull whatever you need. Um, maybe there's a piece here that's about the, the banalities of whiteness. And I think that's but real. Maybe, I think I think yeah. I think there's a real legitimate fear. And and something that I've I've probably seen come up in in far too many papers is that like a, a legitimate sense of of dread that. Whiteness is boring yeah. and banal and, yeah. and just completely devoid of intrigue to the point that if you cannot speak to anything else, why would anybody have any interest in anything that you were doing or have to say? Right. But, but I'm saying that that pressure is two ways. The banalities of whiteness comes from, from perhaps the material banalities of whiteness, mm -hmm. right? But th this piece about white folk have nothing important to say about race, that comes from a particular brand on the left yeah that's on us we can't we can't we can't hinge that back to the suburbs of the fucking main line of philadelphia the way we can when we're talking about the banalities of like 
a particular kind of suburban affluent whiteness. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that we need to take a, a good, long, hard look on whether or not that advances any kind of anti-racism, right? And, and I say that to say this because, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when, when we start thinking about some examples, this, this approach to talking about cultural appropriation starts to become fraught and, and in fact, like devoid of utility, right? You, if Eminem is not in your top 10, I bring this example up in class, mm -hmm. you have no business talking about hip hop because the bull has receipts. And not only does he have receipts, but he's verified by the community, right? Like he, he it, 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 it's not just that there are like white kids in suburban Missouri who like him, right? We could say that about other white rappers, mm -hmm. right? Like Macklemore sales, like more, hey, there were no POC listening to Macklemore. Yep. Right? I mean, he had one or two bops, but that was like at the club, you listen to it secondhand. We weren't downloading that shit, right? So, so is is Eminem a cultural appropriator? No, no, he's a cultural producer, a literally a cultural producer. And then this line of thinking also then says, like, it, because we thingify culture in this way, right? It says that there's no room for cultural syncretism, right? There's no room for cultural change. And so, when when culture gets treated like a discrete object rather than saying that culture is comprised of objects mm -hmm. what ends up happening is that we we say no you don't belong here because of this essentialist notion of race that we've already said a priori and so it it be, it it becomes an impossible position it becomes an, like and and perhaps it's precisely that vein of identity politics that gives us krug and dolezal in the first place that maybe Krug and Dolezal is actually a nightmare of our own making. I said it on the internet. I 1000% co-sign that. I, I don't think that that was a novel idea that they came up with. I, I do not pretend to, no. to subscribe no. to that notion. I think they no. caught on to something that we created. The boogie monster that, that we have always perceived of. And the intention wasn't to be that like thing that goes bump in the night, but that the intention was to, I don't know, maybe like embody it in a non-scary way, but it, it doesn't work because then we, we yeah. immediately default to this level of this is wrong, which mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's not, it's, it, it, it's wrong on a lot of levels, but mm -hmm. there is something to be said about the level of commitment and the desire to actually like it reminds me of alice goffman so much it's like just oh so we really pull wow we are snatching to everybody but, it, but it's it's true right you like you know I, and i make my kids read, read the like expose on goffman i'm like you need to understand when we do methods early on oh, the semester man. i'm like this is the penultimate reason why methods are important and and why ethics are important yeah. um yeah and it reminds me of that right like there's there's a boundary that's dangerous when you're gonna attempt to be an expert on something that I th I think white people tend to cross a little bit too too cavalier, right? They don't they don't acknowledge the the boundary line and and see yeah. where it can be sketchy, right? Like it would be better, I think, if they went for like a mestizaje than than if to go for like the full black. Like don't go full sand. Acknowledge that you can exist in like an interstitial like borderland identity. That's yeah. much more important than trying yeah. to pose as the other. Yeah, and 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 you know what I think. You know, I think folks like... Which, by the way, was an Anzadua reference, so we're just going to keep racking up the receipts. Racking up the citations and also the exposures. Um, also, talk about, like, you know, when I think about Goffman, and I met I met Professor Goffman, I mean, years ago now, at Yale. Like, perfectly affable, bright, like, fun to be around, cool at the bar. Um, but, like, she got canceled Ricky Tick. Oh, yeah. Like, Her name is Mud. Canceled. Her name is Mud. It's like, and you know, I was thinking about her the other day because I was like, ah, do I want to, do I want to sign a section of On the Run? Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach it next year, um, a, a portion of it, mm -hmm. uh, or next semester. But I went digging. I was like, did she, like, has she written another monograph after this? Nope. And so I don't, I don't pretend to know. I don't want to, like, I don't. She was dope when I met her, that the issues with, with On The Run are the issues with On The Run. Um, 
that's a, that's a fucking sidebar. Um, fuck. I lost myself in my own bullshit. What were we just talking about? <laughs> um, well, we were talking about golf men. We we're talking about. Oh, um, oh I got it. I got it. I got it. Go ahead. I got it. You know, I I feel like folks like Will Vicky and 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 I refuse to say it, bro. Danielle Bergoli, they kind of fuck it up for the white kid who grew up in the hood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because you, and and it's and it's funny. It's it's funny because you know, and and I see this in in a number of spaces. There are I've seen black folk and brown folk who come from absolute affluence who know nothing but the burbs, who would point fingers at like the hood star white kid and at all of us who grew up in the hood have at least one near and dear to our hearts. We can't really explain why his family grew up in the same projects as we did, but he did. Yep. Um, and and that experience is authentic to that person. And by, by authentic, which is always a fraught term, I mean like it speaks to his material realities. He talks that way because he went to those schools. He grew up in those neighborhoods, right? He's not Jack in the chopped cheese. That's what he grew up on, mm-hmm. right? And so then you... I'm, I'm going on another tangent. I'm not going to do it. Um, th- these folks fuck it up for that kid because now it, 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 it poisons the waters of how we talk about culture, right? We, we then start to create this, this notion that there's no space for the white kid who grew up in the black ghetto to claim that as a legitimate part of their identity. Like it doesn't uh, like change his whiteness, but it does change his material realities. Right? It does change how they see the world and how they experience the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you get folks like Bad Barbie and Will Vicky who are like, by all accounts, pretty removed from, from any of that. Um, but that becomes how we talk about like cultural hybridity, right? And I think I, I also then wonder like if, like, what do these dynamics mean for? a white kid who's adopted by black parents. There are very few of them, but they do exist. Mm -hmm. They do exist, right? Like, what do we say about that person's experience? Because you're not about to sit here and tell me that that having black parents doesn't change your life. Oh, I I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, I... Even if you're white. Yeah. Even if you're white. No, it, it certainly does. There's there's no way of pretending like you're not going to have an entirely different life experience. Um, well, that's the case where, like, I, you know, I, I think of our nephew. Like, th- there's just no getting around that. Like, he's 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 growing up. He's in, a light-skinned, red-headed black kid. He's growing up in a black home whether he wants to or not. Yep. And and it's, it's going to be one of those things where, like, people will be confused and concerned and be like, but, mm-hmm. but how? And it's like, well... My pops is, is, is full hood. There's no other explanation of this. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Thus is life. This was my socialization. This is what I know. This is who I am. Um, I, I don't, I, it's, it is an interesting thing to think about how it, it sort of precludes opportunity for people who, who have legitimate claim to those experiences and those identities. But then at the same time, um, I, I think that there's other work being done and I want I want to pose this question and then I'm going to run for 30 seconds because like, I really got to take a week. So I'm going to let you think about it for a little bit. Um, but so I, I, I wanted to know if you thought that Bad Baby and Will Vicky are, are actually presenting a challenge to the relationship between blackness and deviance in a positive way. If what them and other people who embody this aesthetic are doing is contributing in a meaningful sense to an alleviation of this deep-seated relationship between deviance and blackness. Yeah. Give me 30 seconds. Go. No. What y'all think? I'm going to save my, 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 my longer comments for when he gets back, but I don't think so. And how's that paper going while we wait for Mothman to get back?
Put your headset on. I got things to say. Okay. So, yes, in theory, no in actuality. Mm. And here's 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 why I say no, because I think, like, we don't we don't look at Whoa Vicky and think that her performance is the ratchetness, right? It's like, we don't look at her and say, there's something fucked up about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of us do, but it's still circus, right? Like, and so we still, that's why she's still famous. Yep. I think that, that there is still something in the American consciousness that says the issue is that what she's performing, the lamb, or the cash me outside shit that that made Bergoli famous hinges back to to a, a style of blackness that I think within our consciousness we still think as both distinctly black but authentically black. Hmm. That while it's a performance, because they're clearly not black, well, Bergoli increasingly not as clear, right? And if uh, folks, we invite you to to go peep the. <laughs> Her, do her a Google social, search. Her, yeah. it's, it is wild. Um, I still think that that we 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 hinge it back to to this is black, and in Wo Vicky's case, where I think I think her her persona is far less polished, right? Like there's a poshness to Bergoli that I think is absent with Wo Vicky. Um, we would at best say like white trash, which then introduces like a class component. I would love for the, for this to become liberatory in that it, it presents to us, it feeds back to us like the farce of race itself. But I don't think that collectively we're even close to that. And so I think that, that I think the potential is there. I think the potential is there um, in that it, it, right. It, it, it renders race farcical, mm -hmm. right? That's part of the genius of, and I'm not drawing a comparison. I'm just stating the high bar. I want to be clear. But that was the genius of Chappelle, right? And the controversy. Chappelle renders race farcical, renders identity farcical, this playground of farts and dicks, and, 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 and he tells you, fuck you if you don't like it. Right. I don't think... I don't think that that I think that Wo Vicky and Bergoli are intelligent in capitalizing. I don't think that they're intelligent in have insofar as like I'm not gonna hinge like I, I I just don't think that they frankly are smart enough to do this to be subversive. Mm -hmm. And and I think frankly they're well, both smart enough so, to know that people are hate watching this shit. I I don't right? think that they're that they're strategically employing this. By no means do I think that there's any strategy in this. I I, I really yeah, don't. Right, I really right, don't. Right. I don't think they're thinking so far ahead that they're like, I can help to normalize these images. Mm -hmm. Not at all what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm getting my timeline wrong, forgive me, but like, there, there's got to be something to be said for like, Nikki, Bad Baby, Cardi, Megan. Like, Okay. Like, okay. Yeah, I, like, I think I'm following. Nikki got a lot of hate when she first came out. It was bad. It was yeah. bad. And, and like, even yeah. towards the end of her career, it, it's still pretty shit. Mm -hmm. Um, and Cardi, a lot of flame at the start of her career, but Megan, not nearly as much. People are out here on their body, yada, yada, shit, like hard right now, real hard. And there's gotta be something to be said about a sort of amelioration of, the way that we perceive of, of blackness, especially black female sexuality, as deviant. I don't think that society is remotely interested in suggesting that that is okay. They're not going to be out here saying, like, you can put that on a billboard outside of Mason 34th Street and we're good with it, right? Like, <laughs> that's not not it. Not, not even close. But something has changed. There's been a, a, a modicum of a paradigm shift to suggest that what Bad Baby's doing on a, on a micro level and what 
Nikki and Cardi have done on a, on a macro level allowed for Megan to to achieve of a lot of success this year. They well, des- well, her, well deserved success. Won. Yeah, well deserved success. But like, because I mean, you, you got to think about the ways in which that women have, like black women have been like imagined, especially in in the like hip hop era. Because you know, you, you look at Bad Baby and like she, she tried to like do a rap thing, and obviously it's terrible. But but so, te- terrible sonically. I'm looking right now. Bro, she had one signal, certified gold, another certified platinum, and got as high as 68 on Billboard. Motherfuckers like this shit. And so that's that's genuinely concerning, right? But it, it speaks to what I'm trying to, to point out here, right? Like something something has changed because that that possibility did not exist for like Keisha Cole, for Khalees, for um like Ashanti, really. Um like it, it just wasn't a reality and they weren't doing it in, in the same style that it's, it's evolved to now, but in their era, it was like, absolutely fucking not like Avril Lavigne wasn't trying to do what they were trying to do. Right. Like that wasn't going to be a smart move for her, yeah. but certainly like Miley is an example of this exact thing. She did it once. It went over well enough that she, you know, like still has a career, a successful one. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. she moved on, right? And she's still got some of it, a little bit of that flavor in there. Not as much, right? She's like rocking her whole Joan Jet thing right now. But but she hinted and picked up on aspects of that performance that are useful. And it definitely yeah, but, but, changed the conversation around it. Mm-hmm. But then I think just but but I'm wondering then, are you pointing out that there's a utilitarianism for white women performers that is not available to black women performers, regardless of what the white women performers do, right? Like Molly, Miley gets to step out and not have it be counted against her, right? Like, I mean, do we need to play 23 for chat? Like, first of all, that song is fucking terrible. <laughs> Who produced, like, right? But Miley gets to play in the dark as Toni Morrison says, right? Add that. Um, and then dip out and go back, do the Joan Jett thing. What a radical, ch- now, and I'm not saying that, that that she doesn't get to reinvent herself. Of course she does, right? But she gets to have it be trendy and not stick to her, right? In a way that's damning. And and I think about like, like, I th- I mean, even it, take Cardi and Megan, right? Like WAP has been celebrated in some ways as this like kind of precarious, if not feminist, like at least sex positive anthem but its trendiness has been carried less by them as them and how they've mobilized white girls and women. Mm -hmm. And so like that feels to me like a Pyrrhic victory, right? Like, like if, if it advances, but the black and Brown women are still stuck. I don't know. And that, that, that's like, I think with some of these examples, that's kind of how I feel. Like Miley gets to take the costume off, yeah, and she did successfully, mm-hmm. right? And that's which isn't to say that Cardi would want to do this, but can you imagine Cardi B dropping a fucking country record and having it fly? No, but but so then but then I think of like I think of like Doja Cat, who I, I referenced the last episode, right? Like. She she's managed to to touch different genres in ways that aren't necessarily usually accessible to a, a young black female artist, right? And do it intentionally to suggest like y'all thought that I was just gonna sound like a bunch of other black female hip hop R and B artists, but I can do all of these things, right? Like, but but for her, it's not taking off and putting on. <laughs> waiting for Cardi B to drop that country music heat. Um, I hope that never happens, sincerely. Um, I would listen. One in part, in part because, like, let's be real, um, Old Town Road was not nearly as good as every other song that Lil Nas X made. Like, the whole rest of, of his tracks are way better than that shit ever will be. Oh, man. Um, but you do never know. Um, Where's I going to right? But so so like she can't she can't put on and take off these identities, 
right? Like, she can dip into the genre, and it's made very explicit by the music industry and all the fans that, like, you are borrowing from this thing. It is not yours. You do not have a say in it. You can never claim it, and you can never be fully integrated within it. But as you mentioned, right, like, Miley can put it on and take it off, and it's never going to stick to her. And no one's going to be like, oh, remember that time you made those those weird, sketchy tracks and, like, it was totally off the cuff and, and out, of, out of pocket? No. The Robin Thicke like, performance? That was, like, it, it happened. That, it was weird. And then everyone got thing. over it because she went immediately from that to her Dolly Parton phase. And now she's in her Joan Jett phase. And, and like, well, I mean, she's borrowing from a lot yeah. of, you know, like, high name women in, in music. But in any event, right, like, the the ability to sort of, like, costume up and 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 go back to you know like to to do a little bit of like superman clark Kent action is is just an affordance that doesn't exist if you aren't white and one you're not interested in i don't think yeah if you don't find as we talk, mentioned earlier that banality to be such a, like an oppressive force i don't i don't honestly know personally i really don't any non-white folk that are out here just absolutely griping about the lack of identity that their culture gives mm-hmm. them affords them right right like right i haven't and, seen it and, and we we see like it, it, is there a tinge of like not a tinge i mean some like cafe bustelo strength doses of not just anti-blackness, but like it, like internalized racism in communities of color, for sure, right? For sure, and and so you know, I think about like uh, you know policies, both like formal in the case of Brazil, and then familial in my case of like whitening, mm-hmm. right? Like you have an obligation to whiten the race and the family, right? So there, there are pieces of that for sure. Like I'm not, I'm not about to say that like all you know all communities of color are just like salubriously pro-black or pro whatever Mm -hmm. but at the same time right like bro i think frankly i think about jd right when he got the snake bites when he strained his hair people were like good bro right like like we think of and and it's not right it's not like a it's not that we disparage hybridity necessarily right it's that we recognize the pursuit of whiteness as whiteness as malignant Mm. in a way that i think renders our relationship to the consumption participation in performance in like white cultural spaces i think patently different than when white folks like are encumbered by this like you never know, says a lot. Um, by this, like, m- the banality of whiteness that impels them, propels them out to pursue something else. I just, I, I, I don't, to not speak for all POC, I do not come from communities like that. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me, let me. And, and maybe this is in closing. What do we do about that? About Wolf Vicky and Bergoli? God, I don't know. Right? Because, like, if, if the idea is, like, to hold them accountable for cultural appropriation, right? Like, they're fucking uncancelable, right? People have made valiant attempts, have scoured the internet for all the receipts. Not only do they not give a fuck and make that clear, but it, it has no... It has no impact, right, mm-hmm. on their bottom line. And best believe, they're making a ton of money off of this. Oh yeah, right. And 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 then the the irony, of course, is like as we hate watch, we drive their viewership, right. Even if you watch someone else's content, saying, "Oh, these content creators are fucking terrible and they're blackfishes," bro, it's like a trigger warning, right? We should call them trigger invitations, <laughs> right? Because there's something about the warning itself that's like, I'm intrigued. I must know more. Click. Yep. Right. Um, and so, so invariably, even the, the like the hate content drives 
their viewership. And, and right, it's I, I gotta say as a quick sidebar, I'm very thankful that I I know of the technology and I'm so like well in, embedded in the things that I'm in that I like the algorithm can't outsmart me. It doesn't matter what I like am sent by people, what sort of things that I like look at, my stuff never changes. Which I find to be a feat of greatness. Because most people, if you if you look at one of those like compilation videos of the two of them, you're gonna be finding little tidbits of like people talking about them or them themselves coming up here and there and everywhere. My shit is clean and pristine, and I'm very thankful for that. Because that there's a lot of manipulation that goes on because that you're exactly right. Like we get enticed, just like those stupid clickbait headlines that everybody was into two years ago. Right, like yep. there's just something about that desire to see either the failure or the success of whoever is in question yeah. that right. you gotta know. Like hate watching and doom scrolling are both forms of desire. Mm -hmm. We need to be honest about it. My this is this is a total aside. My issue with the algorithm is like, really, I want my social media content to be like theory, meat. Black shit, <laughs> guns, wrestling. A little, a little too much of any of them, and all my shit gets fucked up. In part because, like, they pull in radic, right? Like these algorithms pull for the extremes. So, like, if I'm, if I'm looking at Knights Armaments' new bolt carrier group based off of the MK18. Yeah, you're you're gonna get some very all, particular. All, all the Trump shit. No. All the fucking weird QAnon shit. Yep. And I'm just like, that's enough internet for a day. It gets bad. It gets it's dark. dangerous. It's dangerous. This is why next semester when I teach my media technology section, I'm going to um, have my students watch both uh, Social Dilemma and Coded Bias. Coded Bias is, is the jammy jam. It is yep. the smarter version of Social Dilemma yep. with a lot more Do scholars you? of color who are on point. Do you ever teach weapons of math dis destruction? No, because I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's I've good. heard. I've heard. We're checking out for sure. Um, but we haven't answered the question. What do we do? Algorithmically, we can't touch them. No, no. the The system is going to protect them. That's for sure. The system has already prioritized them as the the end all be all of profit, of popularity, of intrigue. So there's no fixing that aspect of it, no matter how hard we try, um, short of quite literally infiltrating the powers that be, which is my end goal, I think, since I, I don't think I'm going to be able to stay in academia, nor do I think I want to. Um, Fair. My, my goal is to become essentially like an ethicist at like Google and be like, okay, we need to we need to do what Tristan tried to do, but better because I'm not like some sketchy white dude. Like I'm going to make you make changes. Um, but uh the solution on the one hand like you kind of want to let them live because whether we like it or not i think that there is good work being done very mm -hmm. very subtle long-term mm -hmm. good work being done mm -hmm. right like on face value is is awful on face value it's really it, fucking it's bad. awful but the potential payoffs by letting this proliferate in american society mm -hmm can be really good so like you kind of want to let them live but you don't want them to thrive if that makes sense you don't you never want it to reach a point of like of like superstardom right like the the last thing you want is like <laughs> daniel bergoli to become oh my god i don't know like i i can't even think of like a, a cultural icon of that like the next beyonce like it's never gonna happen right but like that kind of that kind of social influence would be very dangerous. At, at the risk of like trying to fit in like another philosophical reference, this makes me think. Do you ever read a Gombin for anything? I'll, I think I have, probably in contemporary theory. So he he has this <laughs> this figure he calls Homo Soccer, who is like a human um, that um, that's like ripped of all their political identity and reduced down to like bare animality, and so. Well, I won't. I won't even go down the rabbit hole. But that, if it, in some ways, it feels like that's what you're describing, like like a a social media homo soccer. That's probably <sighs> so right. 
I just, I don't, like, yeah. Is I it, like, one of those things, like, we let them proliferate because, like, we let them stay in their lane because if we know that the lane exists, then we know the issue still exists. And so they become, like, a barometer of, like, our, our racial landscape? Is, yes. is that what you're suggesting? Yes, because the, I think I think that's exactly what's happened. Because they sure. ex- they exist, yeah. like, on a very sort of, like, tangential um, plane of, of this conversation. Right, 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 like, right, 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 right. I had forgotten that I knew who Woe Vicky was. Like, I, I knew who she She's was like, when I uh, saw when I saw the TikTok, but I was like, I, when you mentioned her, I was like, I don't know what a Woe Vicky is. Like, is that like a, is that like a TikTok dance? I, did, I had no idea what the fuck you were referencing. And I was like, oh, I do know who this person is. And I had forgotten about Bad Baby, to be totally honest. Like, it is not news that comes up in any of my circles. Um, despite the sheer volume of, like, black Twitter that I traffic. Um, this is why I make it a point to check... Worldstar? Worldstar. Like, I go, I go to Worldstar, like, I go to the gym three, time, three, yeah. three to four times a week. It's like candy, though, right? Like, too much and you rot your teeth out? Just a little bit. Yeah, just just to check, right? And and it makes sense. You got to diversify your bond. Like that that's me with the few like conservative channels that I have to like peer through on Twitter just to make sure I know what the fuck uh-huh. is going on on the other side, right? Like oh, the know. the fact that a, a Ben Shapiro fan account got blocked by AOC because it asked for pee pics. Like I wouldn't know that if I wasn't traveling in in, in the right circles. Um, yes, this happened. So so they need to exist, but they need to stay in their lane. You're totally one thousand percent correct. It's it's proven effective thus far. Like I think that I think aside from the the platinum record that Bad Baby has, right? Like the most I've seen of her was when TikTok was the other thing that I actually used. She had like a TikTok series or not TikTok a a, a Snapchat series, like really briefly. Mm-hmm. She had like one of those yeah. mini shows on there. I was like, did, did no no no? Does Mothman have a secret TikTok? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I watch TikTok through Twitter, and it's basically only Keats did it because I think he's hilarious. Um. Huh. So, I think their lane is essential to keeping tabs on this conversation of sort of identity politics a little bit, of our relationship to blackness, of our ability to diagnose and measure the the sort of ambiguity of whiteness, mm-hmm. right? and, and people sort of... Uh, discontent for for it not having any any rigid legitimate identifiable aspects to it um that that i think is the purpose that they serve and we need them to serve it otherwise we're never going to be able to really sort of like yeah explain to people that there is a there is a limit to how much you can push and pull of this like cultural appropriation dynamic and what sorts of identities are legitimate from the discursive and then like illegitimate from the discursive this makes me think of another question that that, that, another piece related to this question of like accountability and like what happens next and it's i guess like what then is the recourse for black and brown women right who see like styles and aesthetics that they've proliferated that when dawned by them are unattractive, ghetto, ratchet, unbecoming, mm-hmm. unprofessional. And on white women's bodies, cat a fucking pulp them, right? Become like means of building careers and capitalizing, right? I, 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 and, and I know that it, I'm not saying that these two things are irreconcilable, right? Like I, I, I agree, right? It's, it's one of the reasons why like, you know, like, I, I just want, I want to know who the assholes are. Um, which is what, like, I, I said this in class at some point, like, I don't, I don't mind the existence of like white supremacist websites and stuff. And, and I don't mind the existence of like the, like the proud boy, like, because like, do I see them as a threat? Yes. But you know what? I appreciate knowing that there's clarity on where we stand. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, that brings me a strange comfort. Um, it's the, it's the, the, the dick bag at the conference who's, who's like, wow, your English is so good. And I'm like, I fucking hope so. I was born here. <laughs> right. That's, that's the asshole that I'm not clear on who I like, where I stand with them. But so like, like I, I buy that there, that there's like a, a, a political utility to just 
letting the weeds run rampant, what recourse do we give? Like what hope or solace or comfort or redress does that offer black and brown women? There, I am stumped. There, I, I am truly not sure. Mm. Yep. Because, because I, I think I, so. I, either way, I don't think they, they winning isn't the right phrasing, but the, I don't think they will ever benefit from it. There's no recompense, right? No. Right. And, and the sad part is like in, in the political consciousness, right, when, and, and we see it at, at various levels, right, but when black women content creators like call this stuff out and say, yo, this is fucking bullshit. Like this is fucked up. This is dangerous, right? That e even if I disagree with their, with their like pursuit of, or how they're framing cultural appropriation, right, like, like. They're, they're calling attention to this nexus of issues. The immediate dismissal is not on the grounds of like theory. It's like, you're just a jealous fucking black bitch, mm -hmm. right? You're just mad that nobody wants to touch you or you pee, right? And it becomes so dismissive. So, it's not challenge, right? It's not like, hey, let's engage in this. It's, and, and it's dismissive on the grounds of there being black or brown and there being women. And it's just like cutting and vicious. And so, like, they, they don't even have room to leverage the critique, right, Be before getting cut down immediately. You're just mad because you're not getting any dick. You're just mad because nobody wants you. Mm -hmm. Never mind how, how, how important their critiques might be, how thorough their critiques might be, right, the depth to which they, they get at these issues, right, that's, it stops there. And, you know, we live in a society where, like, folks don't lose sleep over talking to black women that way. No. Why would they? I mean, society, if anything, is going to, to reward you for upholding the, the status quo, for doing exactly what anybody else would assume they'd do in that exact situation. Calling into question the audacity of a black woman to, right. to question anything in that regard and assume right. that people wanted her opinion in the first place, right? Because society's ass backwards. And an issue that pertains to them, their opinion doesn't matter. It makes perfect sense. You know, and, and when, I, when I think about, uh, I'll be, I mean, I'll be frank, when I think about like our own Black App page, you know, one of the things that came up recurringly was the policing of Black girls' bodies. Particularly, a number of, of posters identifying that the same outfits that they would wear that would get them dress coded on campus and sent back to their rooms when they lend them to their white friends, white teammates, whatever, their white counterparts would go putzing around campus without being called a task mm -hmm. by, right. And, and of course, like we can critique the setup of the experiment, but there's something to worth noting, right. When there are, that's, it's like a, a recurring pattern, right? On, on, the, on, on, and not just our page, but other pages, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, like I think both in this space and, and as men in particular, like you and I can sit here and we can pontificate because it doesn't touch us in the same way, right? It, and it fucking sucks. Like I, I, I hate that I don't have an offer. I, I hate that I can't pose anything. Yeah, I mean, the, the best we can say is that, like, those those examples allude to the the very notion that, you know, when when it's done by a black woman, it's sexuality for sexuality's sake. There's, there's no method to the madness. There's no logic. There's no purpose. It is just who you are and what you do. And since you have no control over it, we must control it for you. But it can be intellectually and expertly deployed by someone whose body is not regarded as inherently sexual not in every capacity because we know that women are regarded as sexual objects pretty much by everyone in society at every turn right but the level to which that happens and the situations in yeah. which it happens vary so in that context black women are aware and are reminded constantly that they live in a world that perceives them as this object that is out of control 
but when the same things that they are perceived to just be and do are done by other people, they are strategic, they are logical, they are profitable, in fact. We're not getting to the other thing. The other topic can wait. We can talk about it. Maybe on Friday while we're playing Among Us. Friends, come join us for the Mothman's uh, big thrill. Yeah. All right. Let's let's wrap it up there. Um, that was good stuff. I enjoyed it. We dropped a lot of names from a lot of syllabi. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of good reading for people who are interested in in some of those texts, some of those really you seminal know, pieces. I, I dude, I always I hate the word seminal. I know, but it, I feel like it we works. should. We need there are better words. There are better words. There are probably. I just better don't words. want to think about semen while I'm thinking about knowledge production. There's definitely better words. I feel like I've just heard it used so many times that like now it's it's part of my my vocabulary. I'm convinced that every time someone calls Judith Butler's work seminal, a year ticks off from Butler's life. That's. I think she knows, like, very Butler accurate. Knows. She Butler feels it. Feel it. She yeah. Like, oh, my yeah. God. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. like, it's like her Dorian Gray. She's just, you know, her texts just age for her. It's like, ah. Oh. 